today we're going to change the front tire on my majesty as you can see it's uh it's a bit worn down um all the way down to the wear bars right now i got a pirelli diablo on there been a good tire it's just that i do a lot of miles and it's time for a new one we're going to try out this uh this shinko what is this in sr567 I have a Shinko on my Honda VTX. It's been doing great. So we're going to try one out on this. Um, I always like to try out something different. The cost is awesome also. Um, so we're going to try it out. So I'm going to cover the steps here on getting the front wheel off, which is very simple. Uh, and also actually removing the tire off the rim. And putting the new one on. Um, I use balance beads. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then uh, sealing the tire up and putting it back on. And all right, and here we go. All right, first thing you do is you put the scooter on the center stand. And I also have a jack up underneath the front section underneath the scooter. A little bit from the front the very front because you will see underneath the scooter that it's tapered. I have the jack under it because I'm going to raise the front end when I get the wheel bolt out, the center bolt of the wheel out, so that I can raise it up and actually pull the wheel out. If you look up underneath the scooter you'll see what I'm talking about and I'll show you when we get to that point. Alright, first thing we do is make sure the front wheel is still on the ground. And I'm going to take out the two bolts holding the caliper bracket off. I'm going to take the bracket with the caliper still intact with the brake pads still on. We're not going to mess with any of that. We're also going to look at the brake pads when we have this off. I'm still riding on the brake pads that came with it, which very well may be still the original ones. Uh, I ride highway constantly, so that's why they still are. Uh, right here, takes 12 millimeter socket to get these two bolts right here off. Check your bolts, make sure there's no damage to them. And wiggle the whole assembly right off. Comes right off the rotor, just like that. You're gonna to wanna to tie this up out of the way here. I'm going to place this out of the way for the moment. It's gonna clash, you're gonna let this thing play here for a second. Um, you have this little piece right here, the one around the edge of the front fork that actually keeps the speed sensor out of the way of the brake assembly. Don't don't lose that. It'll come off, which is fine. In fact, let's just go ahead and take it off and put it with the bolts. Um, now's a good time to just go ahead and take a look at the brake pads. If you get a shot of that, you can see these brake pads are still way, way fine. Well within the limit. Um, you want to change them before it gets to the bottom edge of this little mark right here. Like I said, I use highway miles constantly. These things will probably last at least 10,000 more miles, probably actually more than that. But we'll check them again. Uh, probably near 10,000 miles. Don't don't let your brake rotors get ate up by not checking your brake pads. That's the important thing here. Now let's go to the other side. We'll show you how to get this bolt out. You have a pinch, pinch bolt. Yeah, here it takes a six millimeter Allen wrench to break it loose. Now I've already broken it loose. So, now the main axle bolt itself, okay, is 14 millimeter. I have this socket here on the impact wrench. It's at 40 foot-pounds of torque. This right here, break it loose very easily. You can see. Now, when breaking this all the way out, you got, you got your speed sensor on this side. Be very careful not to break it. Otherwise, your scooter is going to be kind of useless. You're not going to go far without the speed sensor working because the computer will freak out eventually. Plus, you have spacers in there. 
So there's no threads on this side, just on the other end. So you can see it came right out. Now's a good time to jack it up slightly. There you go, you can see the wheel just barely hanging off. If you've never done this before, take take your time. Take your time. Tell you what, come back over here. You can see the speed sensor. Alright, here's the speed sensor. It's also spacer in one. We're gonna re-grease this whole thing when we put the wheel back on. It is very easy to misalign this with the inside here. Very easy to do. It's, I just don't understand, but it's also very easy to get it lined up perfectly straight. Some shops have a hard time with it, I've heard. But uh, it, this right here lines right up inside here, which drives it. The wheel turns, it turns this, and that's what makes it work. It's very simple. We'll put some nice new red high temp grease that I have in there that I didn't have last time. And uh, never let this get dry. It will disintegrate and you'll be spending money that you don't want to spend. So now that we have it, this right here broke loose, hold the bolt, rest of the way out. There we go. Boom. Don't let everything get all nasty. We're going to wipe it all clean anyway when we go to put it back in. We're going to jack it up. Pull the wheel out, and of course, should have grabbed a rag for the grease. And then we will put the new tire. Yep, it's gonna lift it off the center stand a little bit because of the fender. You gotta be careful with this thing. Ta da! There's your wheel. And here's the space route I was talking about. Don't lose that. That one on the on the brake side. And then I'm gonna ever so gently get this thing back down on the center stand. It really helps if you can get your front wheel into a bit of a dip so that you don't have to lift it up as far. Now I'm going to pull out the uh, little thing we use to break the bead loose and all that stuff. And we'll be back. Okay. Alright, now we've got the... Uh, Thing to break the bead down with. Obviously, you gotta let the air out of the tire. Pull the valve stem core out with one of these cool little four way tools. Uh, used the end right here that uh, has a little screwy thing in there. I got a new valve stem to put in here. I'll put it the right size for it. If not, we'll have to leave this one in, but this one's been around a while and it doesn't leak or anything, but I need to change me out every once in a while. Yeah, being a nice small tire, that didn't take long, did it? Whew. Okay. Let's go ahead and Here's the fun part. Okay. okay, after removing the valve stem core so all the air is out, we're now going to break the bead on the tire. These break pretty easy. The tire hasn't been on there very long. It's only been a little over a year. Um, 
anyhow, I want to protect the rim a little bit. Microfiber cloth on here. Uh, I don't have this mounted to the floor once I finally get uh, a building, shed, whatever to do it with. I'm going to have a section where this sits. I'll be able to do this by myself. Right now, my wife's going to hold this for me. This doesn't require that much torque, being the, you know, as small as it is, but it still does require someone to hold it. And I'm going to, as you can see, put the towel right here. And just a little bit of torque. Gently, boom, look at that. Whole thing collapsed down. <laughs> Um, if it's been on forever, like some have been, oh, it can be a little bit of fun. Now we're going to flip it over, and we're going to do the other side. As you can see, there's a towel at the bottom here. I want to keep the rim protected. You know, if you don't like your wheels, yeah, you know, do what you want. Um, you know, these had scratches and whatnot in it, but I really don't feel like adding to them. Oh yeah, piece of cake as I hit the rim with the bar right after I said I wasn't going to do that. Oh yeah, you can hear the bees in there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, pull the tire off the rim, which is about the funnest part of this. It's not hard at all, but fun, fun, fun. Alright, I took the tire rim protectors, place them on here you know, at 90 degrees. Um, just move them around wherever you need them. I'm just going to start at one point and just work our way around. Can't have too many tire runners. In fact, these big ones right here from Harbor Freight make really light work of it. Got a couple of these at Cycle Gear. You can see this one's been bent up pretty good. Uh, the more the merrier on these things. I even have some short ones. I'm actually going to be going to Harbor Freight later today and uh, pick up another one of these ones. I'll be doing the one on my motorcycle uh, probably next weekend. So, but anyway, pick spot and get started. Ones with a hook on it are awesome. Go under. Look at this. Got to have a starting point. Then you want to get a second point near the first one. Sometimes it goes like that. Just more to work on things. There we go. Look at that. Slide this around. Oh, yeah. You gotta bust your knuckles one or two times. This is just part of working on things. So if you've never done this before, you don't know what you're missing. Gentle, take your time. This is not a rush job here. Oh, don't let that first one come up. And don't come off the uh, rim protector. I'm going to show you all the mistakes that you can make. I've made them all. Once you get it started really good, you will see just how easy it will pop right on out. Oh yeah, look at that. And then, just about be able to pull it off. That's why you got string on here so you don't lose it inside the tire. When you put a tire on, yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Alright. Phase one of 
getting the tire off. It's complete. Now, here we go. Not even funner part is phase two. And here's where this nice long handle one. This extra curve right here comes in handy. Because now you gotta really dip down the side. Sometimes smaller tires can actually be harder because of the smaller diameter. Not always. Um, since this tire is actually still fresh, uh, according to the DOT date code, it's actually not even two years old. This is kind of cool. I'll show you that DOT date code. I uh, get this here tire off. Too is to take the entire arm like this one, put it in place here. Uh, then you can take this one out, which you used so you can move to another spot. It's got a good hook on it. And Like I said, it can be a lot of fun this way. But anyway, some days are better than others. <laughs> Ooh, let's get rid of fall. And it did. This isn't for everyone. That's why we have tire shops. The machine they use to do this, if, if it's a good machine, it won't even touch the rim. And that's, that's great. Um, those machines cost a ton of money. And that's why they charge a lot. To do it because they have overhead. I'm only doing this for me. I am not a business. I'm not in business. I'm doing this for myself only. Uh, and it's a pain in the butt. And I should have put these two. There we go. Get those closer together. Uh, Man, what's the deal here? So anyway, oh, here we go. Fun, fun, fun. See, that's why we have tire shops. This isn't something you're doing often enough to justify doing it yourself. And by all means, don't. But I do it myself. Um, as you can see, it doesn't always go super smooth. But <laughs> I don't know 
why it's been such a pain in the buttocks today. It wasn't this hard last time. Should have sprayed uh, a little bit of soapy water on there to help. But anyway, tires off. Balance beads, old ceramic compound balance beads. I'll show you. Oh, you can see them sitting there. I'll show you the new ones we go to put on, and uh, we'll talk about the date code when we come back. Now, before you put the new uh, anything on, I was going to change the valve stem. Turns out I don't have the right size one. This uh, this one's still working fine. Um, I'm going to put in a new valve stem insert in. But uh, before you do, clean the clean the rim up a little bit on the inside where the where the bead seal is. You know, brass brush go along the edge real good. Anything that may have stuck to it. You know, these are these are aluminum wheels. Pretty nice. You're not, uh, you're not tearing anything up with this kind of brush. You just want to take off any debris that might cause it not to seal properly. So you can see this rim's in pretty good shape. It's only got 28,000 miles. Well, almost 29,000 now. Hopefully it'll last a good long while. Swipe it down really good. We're gonna use a little bit of a soapy mixture to help make it seal good. Just a little bit of soapy water goes a long way. I've had nothing but good luck with that throughout the years. Boom. Yeah. yeah, there's two main sizes of, uh, of valve stems. You get a half inch here and five eighths, and all I have is five eighths. So mainly that's what's used on uh, cars, four wheelers, and ATVs and stuff. Uh, I have 90 degree valve stems. I'm going to use on my big bike. I'm not going to put them on here. I can still check the tire pressure with this, no problem. The rear wheel on this has a 90 degree valve stem on it. So that's all good. Um, let's go over a couple things right quick. You can see the ceramic beads, the old ones, laying on uh, laying on the towel there. Ceramic compound. They work really good at balancing. I measured out on a little scale I have. Got them in a cup here. So I'm using all my tires. Got one out here for the front wheel. Um, these things keep the wheel constantly balanced. Every time you stop and you start out again, it rebalances. No more unsightly weights on the wheels that might fall off. Uh, have to be, you know, uh, rebalanced as the tires wear. These stay in there, and actually, you can reuse them. I just don't. As cheap as they are, I buy them in bulk. This last time, I bought 32 ounces. I paid 25 bucks for them. They're dirt cheap, so that's why I do this stuff myself to save money. Let's go over to the other thing I was talking about. Let's see where's that much tire. The date code, DOT date code. Now let's make sure you can see it right here. Whoa. Anyway, right here it says DOT, and it has. Uh, letter number, some more letters, but then it has a stamp right in here, 0818. What that means is the first two numbers are the week, the last two numbers are the year. This tire was manufactured the eighth week of 2018 this year. So this tire is just barely six months old. 
just over six months old, which is great. Um, you don't want tires really that are over five years old as the standard. That's what people kind of say. Uh, you know, that's, like I said, it's kind of a standard, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their preference, what they want to go by, and it's, it's, it's a good idea. Um, the tires that were on this thing were original when I got it. It's an 05 manufactured in 04, and I bought it February of 16, and it had the original tires on it. cannot believe it, it, it rode pretty bad. Very, very bad. Mm. These are directional tires, so make sure you have them going on the correct way. Rotation, front. Brake caliper is on the left side, so we know which way it has to rotate. Not this way. It goes this way. Rotation front. Boom. That's how we're going to put it on. I'll grab a couple things and we'll go ahead and get this going. Go. Okay. Okay, now comes the next fun part, and that's getting this thing back on. Uh, lube up a little bit with the soapy water. The other side of the wheel. So you can push it on a bit. I like to start with the valve stem side. You do not want to put tire tools on the valve stem end because you might hit the inside of it, damage it, twist it, whatever. <clears throat> push down on it. <clears throat> Get it going as much as you can. Hey, the sun is coming out. What do you know? Whew. Yay. Put a tire protector there in case you end up having to put a tool on this side. Put one where you're gonna need it. We got six of them all together, so I'm not afraid to use them. Come on, baby, get in there. It's cool, you can slide them around. They got strong rings on for a reason. Come on, man, get on there. Ah, whatever. Let's hope this doesn't take forever. I was trying to make a quick video, but then of course this is probably going to be the hardest tire ever to get on. Yay, huh? Alright. Now, let's get one on over here. We're going to put this bad boy right here. Try to put this over. Hold this side down at the same time. Let's just show you how much fun this can be. Oh, yeah. Because you want to try to keep the top part of the tire up over the rim. We're just trying to get the bottom on first. Now, these tires will do all kinds of funny things. Normally, I got someone helping me right now. She's having to film me, so yeah. Yeah, no. Really need to get that adapter from Harbor Freight. It allows you to take the. <coughs> Damn, this isn't going to work like this. Uh, Thing's not wanting to grab. Just one piece is wanting to grab. The whole thing. Like I said, this could be a lot of fun. I just want to grab the whole tire. So just the bottom section. Ah. Whew. But anyway, like I said, this is not for the faint of heart, man. If you don't you don't think you can do it, then don't. But it will go. 
you want to try it once, go for it. I mean, it ain't gonna hurt you. I think you're gonna damage your wheels though. Then don't. This is my scooter. It's not a hot rod. It's not a high dollar, super expensive bike. I did them on the chrome wheels on my Triumph without damaging them. Uh, <laughs> it just takes, as you can see, definitely some patience. Ooh. A little bit of know-how. Wow. And. Things all twisted up. Well, might get a scratch on this one. Oh, come on, big gun. There we go. All right. Look, <laughs> that was funny. Hey, if you can't laugh at yourself, you just ain't got no sense of humor. Now, since I know I have six of these, that means I got one stay wall. Another reason why they have strings on them. In case you lose one. Inside the tire. Nope. Oh, okay, I thought I had one in there. Whoa. That would have been funny. Again, start not at the valve stem. Don't, don't, don't let a tool hit the actual valve stem. Especially with a brand new tire. Listen to those tire machines as they're putting a new tire on. They're growing in a little. Hydraulics are a wonderful thing. They'd be working out. Before we put the actual last uh, part in, we're going to pour the beads in. So I'm going to get this most of the way on. Pour the beads in. Because that's the time to do it. We're not putting them in through the valve stem. Come on, baby. Come on in. Oh, it wants to be a pain. Wow, that one will be fine. not to damage the bead. Uh, come on. Good Lord. Like I said, some, most of the time this goes on nice and easy. Today it's just being different. Probably because first time I had the camera on doing this. You know how it goes. It's always easy until you want to show somebody else how easy it is. Something stupid happens, like your tools break, or you know, crazy things come up. Oh, that's tight. Come on, man. Oh. Yeah, I don't like that right there. I used to have to slide down. In the right way. Could just be a manufacturer. It says Shinko. Never used. Uh, 
go on the scooter. Okay, here comes the part where we're going to go ahead and pour the bees in. We're just so close to it popping in that let's just do it now. Now let's take a big one. I'll make sure I don't miss any. Follow in. Pour bees in. Ta-da. Yeah. It really is that simple. Land over sideways. Easily. And then if you can. God. Yeah, that rim protector in there. String pulls it across tight. Get this nice easy spoon in there. And then that should be it. Thank you, Lord. Whew. A little bit more lube probably would have helped. I don't want to lube it too much. Uh, I want to clump the beads up. Man, I want to put that nice new valve stem in. Valve stem insert. Whatever it's technically called. Got a brand new one in my box here. Yeah. It would have been nice if the one I bought was the right size, but anyway. I cleaned the threads up. Got to have one of these little four-way handy-dandy tools. It's for putting new valve stems in, taking them out, cleaning the threads, etc. Got to have. Now, normally, uh, you would fill the air in the tire before putting a valve stem in because you can get a rush of air in there faster so that you can uh, uh, seat the bee a whole lot faster. Well, I don't have that little adapter tool. However, I've done very well without having it. Because there's beads in there, you're going to want the valve stem up. So all the beads are at the bottom. And you can push on it a bit to... Uh, get it to work. Sometimes it's a pain, sometimes it's not. Yeah, it's just part of doing this kind of work. So this comes with the territory. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of soapy water around both sides to help seal it. You can see this side's pushed on pretty good from the fact that we just uh, pushed on pretty hard, pulled on one side, pushed on the other. I am going to use an air chuck. It does not have a gauge on it to start with. I'm going to use my digital gauge to check it. Let's just see what happens. As you can see, air is just leaking right past the bead. And boom! I just push on a little bit and the bow. Now, a lot of times when the bead is seating, it can be dangerous. It could explode, chaos could happen, cats and dogs living together, end times, all kinds of crazy nasty stuff. This is a scooter tire. This is not a commercial truck tire. Yes, it could still kill me. It's a chance that I took. You didn't. Learn from me. I'm still here to talk about it. So, if you don't feel safe doing that, then don't do it. I'm okay with it. This tire is rated at 33 PSI max. A little bit lower than most tires. However, I didn't make the tire. I just go with it. Bar, no, we want PSI. And, uh, Anyway, once you get the pressure set, then we will go ahead and I'll uh, show you about putting it back on. I'm going to go ahead and clean this mess up first, and we'll be back. All right, here we are. Um, got the wheel back in place. Um, what you want to do, of course, before you do that, is to make sure no debris got inside either of the wheel bearings on each side. If anything has, take it out.
Put a little bit of grease in there. Got it sort of up in place. Um, got a hydraulic jack still holding the front end up. Make sure that's good. Here's the uh, bolt. You can see it's got a little bit of debris on it. No big deal. You know, wipe it right off. Clean the threads off. Make sure the threads are clean. Remember, it's not going into a bolt. It's going into the other fork. We're going to put a dab of grease on it. Um, for those who don't ride quite often, make sure ain't nothing rusted up, and etc. Otherwise, you know, it could seize on you. You could put anti-seize on the threads if you want. It's not going to hurt nothing. Uh, not sure if the manual says to do that or not. I'm going to put a little bit of grease though. It's not going to hurt a thing. This might not be the exact Yamaha way of doing things, but this is the way I do things. This thing rides in the rain, and the rain we've had this summer has uh, e been equal with a monsoon. I mean, I'm passing cars that are doing 20 miles an hour. It's raining so hard I couldn't see the speedometer. And in your scooter ride, I'll tell you, you got to keep moving. You have got to keep moving, or you're going to get extremely drenched. And even with that Pirelli, as worn as it was, never once lost traction. Excellent tires. I'm hoping I get to the the same uh, traction out of this Shinko. This is an experiment. We're going to find out. This thing was $40 with shipping. Not going to lose. If it works out great and I get 8,000 miles out of it, I'm going to be just tickled. Okay, we're going to start the bolt right here. We're going to take a look at this here shim. In fact, I'm going to put just a teeny bit of a grease on that as well. So you can see it seals just a little bit. Yeah, let's pull this out for a second. Slide that up in there. Ah, the ever so fun part on this is getting everything lined up. The cool part about being on the center stand is you can just pull that on the front end on the fender. Get it started. And then it comes out the other side. The other side. The other side. And here's where we're going to get the speedometer and all lined up. These wheel bearings are in excellent shape. They are. I believe they are Timkins, which probably will last forever. They go out, you know, anything man-made will eventually fail, but these, these kind of wheel bearings are excellent. Here's where we lube up the speedometer unit. Lube it up every time, which is the thing to do. Uh, wipe off this old stuff. Speedometer sensor goes round and round. It's amazing how stories I've heard on the Majesty forum of shops tearing this up. I mean, um, they must have some seriously inexperienced people working there. Because <laughs> how do you break this? I mean, I know it's a piece of plastic and all this with a metal. Well, you know, some kind of bimetal insert in here. It's just a electromagnetic type setup that goes round and round, an inductive type thing that, you know, but, but how do you break this? Seriously, how, how does that happen? But, apparently, uh, we will slide this thing down in here. That's some good high temp grease. Um, you want to use decent grease. I don't know how you guys ride your scooters, but this one saw once that needle, and it took quite a while. That needle saw 115 miles. That is not actually 115 miles an hour, I know. I just wanted to see if I could do it. I do not recommend doing it, and I will never do it again. It was scary. But 100, no problem. I probably shouldn't say that, right? 
Did you give me the eye? Okay. But uh, I just want to see if I could do it. The speedometer is off. It's flight like 10%. That's still over 100 miles an hour. Bone stock. This thing, this 400 is, dang, my old uh, KZ 400S I used to have, old 76. It would do it too, but not quite the style of this thing does. Now, when you put this in, I don't, know, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but I mean, look, it just sits right in there. It's the spacer, the speedometer, it's, it's all in one. It, if it goes in there flat, can you can you get zoom in on this? It's got two notches built into the wheel. That all you got to do is put these two right here, anywhere in between them, just not on them. That's it. That is literally it, and you won't screw it up. So. Yeah, how, how guys jack that all up is, I, I'm impressed. Someone must have worked really hard to screw that up. But it does happen. Maybe because this is an 05 and, and the ones after this, now this is the first year for the US, I mean. The ones after this uh, were easier to jack up. The fun part is always getting this bolt started. Well, anyway, let's see. Nice and three. Oh, wow. Uh, that's probably a mess up. Okay. It's got a tab on this, put on the thing. Does it stick straight up? Tell me about that. Um, come over here and show this thing. Take the camera off the tripod and show this. I can't touch it because of the grease on my hand. Let's show this part. Right here. You got the tab on the fork. Right here, see where my finger is? Got a tab on the fork, and you got a slot right there on the speedometer unit. Slides right up into it. I forgot about that. Show it again. Right here. See that right there? A little slot? Yeah. Goes right in that tab. the sound of success. Now, I am going to get that socket, I mean, uh, the ratchet, I not get. I'm going to start this thing, and then we're going to use the torque wrench on it. I set it to exactly 40. La -da -da. Well, still one of them days, man. Put the video camera on and everything just get shot to shit. Okay, come over here on this side. Port wrench. Yeah, yeah, that's important. When you have wheel bearings, it's important. The torque is right. Good old click torque wrench. Used for decades. It's not a thing wrong with them. Harbor Freight. On sale today, actually. Ten bucks. I'll be going there after this is done. Uh, you will literally hear the click. Hear that? That's it. Stop right there. Don't torque it any further. That part's done. This is the perfect time to tighten the pinch bolt. No, I don't know what the torque is supposed to be for the pinch bolt. We're just going to snug it up. Doesn't have to have massive torque on it. 
Uh, yes, the service manual tells you all this stuff. Um, I've been tightening wrenches for so long, it's not funny. Uh, good to go. Hey, we're back now with a fresh battery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't last forever. Anyhow, we got the other side buttoned up. Now we're going to do this side. Remember your little clip here. It keeps the speedometer uh, sensor cable out of the way of the brakes. Extremely important. This hooks over the end of the cable. Same way it came off. Uh, the bolt for the, uh, the brake caliper bracket. I take the whole thing off together. There's no sense in taking off more than you need to. Slides right back, brake, brake pads, slide right back over the rudder again. Nice and easy. Uh, yeah, nice and easy again, just like everything else has been today. Really? Make sure there's no debris in your bolts before you stick them back in. And I just looked up the torque for these babies and I cannot for a life of me recall. Anyhow, these are fine thread. I do not use air when uh, putting these kind of bolts back on. Taking them off isn't so much a big deal. And of course, I grabbed the wrong ratchet. You cannot be serious. As you can see, yeah, all kinds of weird stuff happens when you're working on things. To anyone. Even when you think you have everything laid out. Eh, story of my life. feel for how things should be. Then of course, <clears throat> check to make sure the brakes do work. Imagine that. Your mental checklist. Make sure you got it all in. We torqued the, uh, the main axle bolt. 40 pounds, I know that one for sure. Pinch bolt, all back in. Everything's in, spacers, wheel spins, da -da -da, et cetera, et cetera. Blah, 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 tire pressure, you know. Most of the time, uh, you seat tires at about 40 pounds. This one's about 44 pounds. Lower it back down to about 30, pump it up to 33, boom. I'm gonna go around the neighborhood right quick. Uh, little test ride, gonna at low speeds, I'm gonna you know, corner it back and forth across the road. Try to get off some of the mold release, as people call it. Um, going at highway speeds is not the time to be doing that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Come back, hopefully everything is fine. And then this project will be a wrap. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you all learned uh, <laughs> what to do and what not to do. And until next time, take care. Bye.